Hey guys, my name is Alex Barham. So although the Jackson brand is now really associated with the Rockstar and the All-Star series, which are out there doing loops and phonics monkeys and air screws, really EJ got his start making playboats a long time before he had his own brand. And a lot of them were these super slicey wing boats because cartwheeling was what freestyle was at the time. At the same time though, a lot of them had added volume to add river run ability and versatility. And a lot of that was just shaved off for maximum performance in the Mixmaster. Normally I don't do this because my whole goal is to give you an impartial reference, but look up here, I'm gonna add a link to EJ's walkthrough that he did where he really went really in depth with a minimum of hype into what his thought process was behind every curve of this boat. I'd never recommend these, but this one's quite good. Now, that, done, that said, I'm not gonna go much further into the form and detail of this boat. I'm gonna focus more on really what it's like and what I think it's about. So, with the very spooned out ends, very minimal volume, this boat, is insanely slicey. Cartwheels on flat water, end over end over end. Incredibly easy to squirt and keep on end. It is very fun. Yet you still have really almost, a, uh, I don't know how to say it besides, modern amount of rocker, right? Quite a substantial amount of curvature in the hull, unlike the old boats, which were very flat. Now, what that does is it really adds something for bouncing off rocks. Much easier to boof, seems to jump into splats easier, and it really adds a lot of performance to just how this boat functions. Um, it is very noticeable over an old school boat. There's no way around it. Now, on the other hand, <laughs> It does have a couple drawbacks. The most notable one that I found is that I thought surfing this boat was surprisingly goofy and weird. Uh, very often, because of that curvature in the back and then the spoon and the stern, the combined effect was that the boat just wanted to stand up and tail ride around until eventually picked an edge and went off the wave. Super surprising. I was not expecting that at all. Um, and kind of disappointing. But at the same time, when it comes to what I really used this boat for, which is middle of the summer, let's go bounce off rocks, let's do obnoxious things just for the excuse to go boating instead of suffering in the heat. Let's make things sporty by bringing a spoon to a gunfight. All of those things the Mixmaster excels at. Um, Check out a link up there. I'll drop a video link to Wade Harrison absolutely shredding in a Mixmaster. He is incredible Southeast style in a ball. Just awesome at making that boat shine much better than I am. I really think that if that's what you're looking to do, this is a great boat to do it in. Now then, what I didn't say was what I think a lot of people who are watching this are gonna be looking for. I get a lot of these, what I call jackknife or jack of all trade type questions about boats. Uh, if you follow me at all, you know that I roll around with a quiver. You know, I usually have three or four boats. I really don't believe in the one boat model. And this boat definitely doesn't work for that. Unfortunately, because this is so focused on this high-end, low-water performance, I do think that there are drawbacks for paddlers who cannot fit in a high-float kind of scenario in the 7.5, or where you're gonna want to use this for river. Some people are gonna want to use this for river running with a little bit of surf, a little added comfort over the old-school boats, a little bit more length and volume for added speed and ride higher. It's just not gonna fit that model. I tried, I specifically took a day to go paddle easier water. And 
while I had a ton of fun challenging myself in something that doesn't challenge me very much at all anymore, making old stuff new again, all of that was absolutely fantastic. None of it really went towards this boat being excellent as an all-rounder. If that's what you're looking for, go demo the fun series. Those um, river running playboats are probably what you're looking for. However, my personal advice and my philosophy is go for an oversized full performance playboat. If you can fit in a medium jet, for example, and you paddle a large and just go nuts on the outfitting, you're gonna have all the extra volume that you need, tons of haul speed. It really works really nicely. So food for thought. Back to the Mixmaster. Now, while all of those things are fantastic about this boat, there are some downsides. Obviously, you're putting yourself in a disadvantage for the sake of putting yourself in a disadvantage. Let's put that aside. Um, the outfitting. Yes, it's typical Jackson Fair. Um, the side ropes, I think they work fine, but they always dig into my hips. So if you're in the same boat, I'll drop a link there. Sorry there's so many, but to how I fix it so it makes the boat very comfortable again. There, there are two things which irked me about this. So for the longevity of the boat, because you have such a flat hull, you really are gonna need a solid track in there. Um, Jackson doesn't really offer a solid track. They have this thin piece of ABS or whatever that they tack in there. You know, it works for keeping the seat in place, but it really doesn't help for the strength of the boat. And the other thing that it really doesn't help, which I saw a lot in this boat, is the boat deforming under pressure. And whereas in a lot of the late 90s boats, you had a solid foam front pillar, which managed to snake all the way to the front, which, all right, fine, it wasn't comfortable, but it made sure the boat couldn't crush on your feet. And back in the day, boats crushing on feet, breaking small bones in your foot, boats bending on impact and breaking your ankles, that stuff really happened. And when I paddle my old school boats because they are reinforced, I don't worry about that. When I do smack into something, nothing bad happens. I don't get any bad tweaks or anything like that. It didn't take much in the Mixmaster for me to feel the boat tweaking and torquing my ankles, pushing on the small bones of my foot feet in ways that made me nervous. Um, so. Definitely, I think Jackson could do a better job across the spectrum in making their boats more rigid, but certainly it would have been nice in the Mixmaster. I hope they make that improvement in the future. I'm rooting for you guys, don't take it personally. The only other thing would just be make sure you have a super dry skirt if you paddle one of these. You're gonna get wet, you're gonna sub out. Don't try and paddle this without a good skirt. You're gonna be bailing water out constantly. To that point, um, you may want to add a drain plug into this boat. Uh, it was certainly the one nagging little thing that all the old school slice boats I have have drain plugs and they're fantastic because everything's so narrow, all the water comes out. But then as soon as you don't have one, like in the Mixmaster, getting that water out becomes a nuisance. Make sure you demo these. Um, you know, to EJ's point, these two sizes were not built around a person's weight. They were more built around a person's philosophy. So you're going to need to sit in one of these or both of these, float it, flat, work, flat water, cartwheel it, and really get a sense for what you're getting into if you're trying to pick sizes. Um, and just generally you should do it to make sure that you can fit comfortably because your feet are slipping into pockets. So, you know, it could be tight or it could be too tight. But that's it. If you want a comparison over why you would uh, buy one of these versus why you'd buy something that was made 20 years ago, maybe spruce it up, I totally understand. Here's my last video link for this video. Again, sorry there's been so many. Enjoy. If you have any questions, leave a comment. Later.